on this episode of the Oklahoma Breakdown with Iker and Lehman, presented by Riverwind Casino, the author of the College Football Bible, Phil Steele, joins us for an interview. Phil has OU win it at all this season in his magazine, so we talked to him about that. We talked to him about who could challenge the Sooners in the Big 12 and some of his surprise teams this year in college football. And that's it. Please download and subscribe to the podcast. Rate it five stars and write us a good review. Follow the show on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. Just search Oklahoma Breakdown on any of those, and you'll find us. All right. Our man, Michael Hostie, will kick this thing off. It's time for the Oklahoma Breakdown. It's beautiful Monday, August 9th. And you're listening to the Oklahoma Breakdown with Iker and Lehman, presented by Riverwind Casino. Riverwind is Oklahoma City's premier casino experience, and your health and safety are Riverwind's number one priorities. There are so many reasons why Riverwind is consistently voted OKC's number one casino, but it all starts with their amazing variety of gaming thrills and excitement. Riverwind's beautiful award-winning environment plays host to more than 2,800 of the latest electronic games with a huge selection of table games, including blackjack, blackjack match, roulette, and Teddy's favorite, craps. No matter what your game, Riverwind has it in spades and hearts. And every night from August 1st to 27th, 6 p.m. to midnight, you can win your share of $300,000 in cash bonus play in prizes in Riverwind's $300,000 Riverwind win anniversary. Do you see what they did there? River win, not wind, win win anniversary. If you need help finding your way, just visit riverwind.com, Riverwind Casino, simply the one. Now we're recording this way in advance, Ted. We're on vacation. We we us do, we take vacation since when? We are on vacation. I I'm having a, I guess, probably a beer by the pool right now, I think is what I'm doing. I, I would assume I'm drinking wine. <laughs> I'm in a big, I'm in a big wine phase right now. Now, of course, if I'm by the pool, it's probably, I'm, I'm hammering seltzers, you know, yeah. you, you know how I roll, but. You think they sell Will and Wiley where you're going? I. I'm not sure. I doubt it, but this is how I will put it. I can probably sneak it into the country. Oh, okay. I like that. Maybe, but I really don't want to get arrested. Do you get arrested for trying to do that stuff? Mm. They they probably just confiscate it, right? Yeah. They act tough. And then the guys go drink it back in the back at the airport. (laughs) I mean, that's. If I was if I was working security, that's what I would do. I mean, <laughs> right. But yeah, we have we we are on vacation, but we can't we can't mess with the schedule, man. People expect the show. They expect the podcast to be in the feed. So we got it and, and we've got a good one. And we we have we've had a lot of great guests lately on the podcast, but Phil still is i mean he is one of the ogs of college football i love when we get to have him on the amount of knowledge in that man's brain and the amount of knowledge that they are able to fit into that magazine is astonishing no it's good it's a uh it's a great good resource for the entire year i mean gosh we cover the big 12 and call the games for ou against the big 12 and it could be hard enough knowing all the ins and outs and, and best players, coaching staffs of, of all those teams. And uh, he does all 130. So kudos to old Phil Steele. Yeah, it's it's unbelievable. It's ridiculous what he does. But, yeah, you guys are going to enjoy that interview. And just, just to get you excited about it, he's picking OU to win it all. He's picking him yeah. to win it all. So it, it was it was a fun conversation because – Phil is an OU fan this year. I, I don't know if people realize that about him. When he makes these predictions and like he, he picks teams to win the national championship, he picks teams to be the most surprise, like the su- most surprising teams in the country. He then has a rooting interest in it because they track all of the results, right? Like they right. score themselves and then compare them to the other magazines. Like, Phil Steele is a diehard Suter fan this season, and I love that. 
Yeah, you can't. Whenever you make a magazine every year and it's it comes out like clockwork, you can't just bury the results from the previous year. You got to track them. So you got to put a lot into making your pick, and it's it's got to be difficult. You got to weigh all the different factors. And this year it's Oklahoma. We'll see. Yeah. So please leave us a five star review on Apple Podcasts. Leave us a nice comment. A comment with a guess you want to try it for us to try to get on the podcast, but let's get to this feel still interview. I, I feel like I say his name different every single time. Like feel sometimes steel. I feel Phil steel feel, I think I dropped a feel steel <laughs> and a full, like I, it's like my mouth is getting stuck trying to say his name. I don't know what's happening to me. Golly. Uh, but first, just, just say it real fast. Phil steel feel. Steel. There you go. Ah, it's not, it's not going well. All right. First Fidelity Bank is a full-service financial institution based in Oklahoma, tailored solutions for all your personal and business needs. Checking accounts, saving accounts, home loans, and much more. They do it all. Whether it's online banking from your computer or mobile banking from your phone, everything is stress-free with FFB. Making mobile deposits, paying bills online, and moving the money to different accounts could not be easier. First Fidelity Bank also provides free ATMs worldwide, making banking convenient wherever you are. They also get back to the community. I just can't read. I mean, just my mind's on vacation already. First Fidelity Bank also gives back to the community. That's that's English. There we go. FFB donates a total of more than $500,000 to local charities and educational foundations. Make your life easier and go bank at First Fidelity Bank. Visit FFB.com for more information. All right, here he is. Here is Phil Steele. It is our pleasure to be joined by the author of what is known as the college football Bible. I call him the godfather of college football. That's how important he is to the sport. Phil Steele is in the house. Phil, what's going on, man? Oh, guys, I tell you what, this is uh, this year right now, so much better than last year at this time. And we're wondering if we're playing football uh, I'm just pumped up and excited, and I think we're going to have some great home field edges this year because fans are going to be coming back to the stadiums and too. So uh, I'm I'm doing as good as you can do. It's fun to talk football. We've been wrapped up in another uh, issue around here, around Oklahoma, <laughs> talking conference stuff. So it's like all of a sudden football's about to start, and it's like, oh yeah, we we got to play this year. We got to play the Big Twelve this year. Let's talk about this team. Yeah, and, and let's hope that Oklahoma focuses on this season because uh, I picked them to win the national title for the first time since 2000 this year. So let's uh, let's focus on this season, guys, and we uh, let's take care of business right now. Let, let's dive in to uh, some of the things you have in the magazine about Oklahoma. Like you mentioned, you, you're picking them to win it all. You you always take a close look at schedules when it comes to how it'll set a team up for success. When, when you look at Oklahoma having, you know, Tulane and Nebraska in the non-conference, and then you look at the conference slate, how do you see OU's schedule working for them this season? Uh, I think it works out pretty good. I believe their main competition in the Big 12 this year is probably Iowa State. Iowa State is absolutely loaded. Of course, beat Oklahoma last year, gave them a game in the Big 12 title game and have practically everybody back. But Oklahoma gets that big game at home on November 20th. So I think that's a big plus. And uh, I think they will be at least a touchdown favorite in every single game this year. If you look at their schedule top to bottom, uh, the other tough games, of course, Texas, that game in Dallas. But they get TCU at home, which is huge. And you look at the road slate, you know, at Tulane, at Kansas State, at Kansas, at Baylor, at Oklahoma State. I believe they'll be a double-digit favorite in every single road game this year. So it sets up pretty well for them to get back to the Big 12 title game. Now, whenever you, you think about Oklahoma in past years, it's like there's always been a loss that you didn't foresee and it feels like it's a road game in October usually, but um, whenever you look over the schedule, are there any games that, you know, people call them trap games or, or whatever you want to label it as that maybe attention could possibly be focused elsewhere, or maybe um, they don't show up with their best stuff kind of earlier in the season. What's, what's that game out there that people aren't looking at that could be a, a, a problem? Well, normally I would say at Kansas state, 
But Kansas State beat them the last two years. And if you watch Kansas State's game last year, uh, Oklahoma just absolutely dominated them in the first half. It wasn't even a game. In fact, middle of the third quarter, you're fixing to switch the set and say that's it for this game. is like a three-touchdown lead, and they lost. So I don't think the halftime speech will be any problem for Lincoln Riley. I don't think the pregame speech will be any problem for Lincoln Riley. I guess the one game that I'd be uh, maybe concerned with would be TCU. I think TCU is going to be a, a very good team this year. Uh, they've got a, a quarterback in Max uh, Dugan. Uh, they've got some outstanding running backs led by Zachary Evans. The defense is there. And it's the week after Texas. So it, it may be a little bit of a low for them. And, you know, last year they handled TCU handily, 33-14. to 14. Uh, it might be more like that 2019 game against TCU, which was 28-24. I would say TCU would be the one game I'd be concerned about would be the uh, the sleeper one. Phil, everyone has extremely high expectations for Spencer Rattler going into the year, and you're, you're no exception, right? You've got him as a first-team preseason All-American on your list. You've got him on the cover of the magazine. Uh, clearly you're expecting big things from Rattler this season. Just what are the realistic expectations for him heading into this season? Because it, it seems like anything short of winning the Heisman and winning a national championship, he'll, he'll like fall short of expectations, right? I, I agree with that a hundred percent. In fact, if you go to the back of the magazine where I list my Heisman favorites, he is number one. Uh, I think it's your typical Lincoln Riley experienced uh, quarterback. I mean, his first three years, he had an experienced quarterback. Two of them won the Heisman Trophy. The other was a Heisman finalist and made the playoff all three years. And I love the supporting cast. They have my number one rated offensive line in front of them, number two rated set of receivers to throw to, and how about my number four set of running backs behind them. So, at, And the one thing I really like about Spencer Rattler, watching that Texas game last year, I mean, how many quarterbacks nowadays get benched and then respond like he did? I thought he played great in the rest of the Texas game and the rest of the season, for that matter. And uh, I, I really like the way that he responded to that adversity of getting benched against Texas. So I think he's ready for a massive season. He's got a great supporting cast. It's going to be your typical Oklahoma offense. In fact, I, I feel Oklahoma has got the best offense in the country. Take us inside that rating for the offensive line, best unit in the country. It's a group that had slipped a little bit last year off of previous year's performance. Um, I don't know what people would attribute that to. I think you could look at a bunch of different things, but how do you have this group bouncing back? I mean, number one in the country, that, that's, a, that's a, big group, uh, uh, a big goal for this group. Yeah, it definitely is, especially, uh, you know, they, they uh, lose a couple players like Creed Humphrey and Adrian Ely from last year's squad. Uh, I've got great respect uh, for uh, Oklahoma's uh, offensive line coach, uh, and I, I think that he does a great job molding this team each year. And when you look at the talent that they have, uh, Tyrese Robinson, Marquise Hayes, Eric Swenson, and even the two newcomers, Anton Harrison and Andrew Rehm are both guys, all five of those guys are NFL caliber guys. And they add in a guy like Wanya Morris from Tennessee, uh, add in a guy from Arizona State and Robert Conjol. And once again, going back to just the job that uh, Bill Budden uh, does at the offensive line for Oklahoma, I think he's going to got the pieces to mold together yet another outstanding offensive line. And uh, remember, it's just a couple of years ago, they won the Joe Moore Award for the top offensive line in the country. Phil, I, I'm sure it's becoming increasingly more difficult for you to crunch the numbers, get your projections with the amount of movement that we're seeing now in college football. OU brings in Eric Gray from Tennessee, and it seems like he's going to be a big factor in the offense. With the way that you go about your process, like how, how do you project what you think you'll find or what what you'll get from Eric Gray when he goes from Tennessee to OU? Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, I do. And it, you never know with a transfer how it's going to be, but I think now transfers are more accepted. It seemed, you know, uh, Gabe, uh, I think it was probably 10 years ago, a transfer was looked at as, okay, there's a big problem here. Why did he transfer? There has to be a problem. But nowadays with the transfer portal, 
maybe it's not necessarily a problem, and and maybe it's just a guy that that needs a new place. And so I, I've, I've watched Eric Gray at Tennessee, and he's been dominant back at times. Uh, running behind that offensive line with the the, the uh, pass game they have, I think he fits in extremely well to go along with Kennedy Brooks, who of course was a two time thousand yard rusher and uh, opted out last year. So overall. Uh, this is going to be an outstanding running back group. And I think Eric Gray fits in very well. And I was impressed with him almost every snap he took at Tennessee. Just to build on that a little bit, you know, we're seeing something this year we've never seen before, at least that I can remember as the super senior. And I, it's not necessarily a huge thing for Oklahoma, but like a team like Iowa State that has so many guys coming back and a lot of them are incredibly experienced guys. How does that weigh in your formula compared to a typical senior? Yeah, it's uh, you have to give them a little bit extra edge. I mean, uh, there's a, there is a big difference an extra age, uh, an extra year of maturity, an extra year of weightlifting, and uh, you know, you touch on with Iowa State, they are they are just loaded with veterans across the board. And in fact, when I talked to Coach Campbell, he said it's the deepest offensive line he's had and has a chance to be special. Remember last year they had an inexperienced offensive line. And uh, now you've got that offensive line, which might be the best that Campbell's had there. You take a veteran quarterback like Brock Purdy, one of the best running backs in the country in Brees Hall, best tight end room in the country with Chase Allen and Charlie Kolar, dangerous receiver like Xavier Hutchinson. That's a dangerous team. And defensively, I mean, Mike Rose has been there forever at the linebacker position. The same thing with Greg Eisworth at safety. seems like those guys have just been there forever, and they're going to have one of their top defenses as well. So, well, here's the one thing. I I talked to about 110 of the 130 head coaches out there this year, and almost everybody's got 15, 16, 17 returning starters. Almost everybody is three deep. Uh, A lot of the coaches commented they normally scrape in to get together at two deep in the spring, and this year they went three full teams. Uh, the only teams that are inexperienced this year are basically the four teams that were in the playoff last year. They all have 9, 10, 11 returning starters, and all of them lose their starting quarterback, which is another reason why I picked Oklahoma uh, to win it all this year. Quick break. Do you own a business if you do? You need Insurica in your life. Insurica is one of the country's largest insurance brokers with 30 offices throughout Oklahoma, Texas, and the Southwest. Insurica is able to customize programs by accessing the latest information from many insurance carriers. They compare and contrast coverage offerings and pricing in order to design a cost-effective, comprehensive program to meet your business's specific needs. Insurica's clients become best-in-class businesses by working with Insurica's team of advisors to manage risk. Purchasing insurance is only one way to protect your business. Best-in-class businesses win by avoiding a loss in the first place. If your business partners with Insurica, who save huge amounts of money and take back control of your total cost of risk. I'm an Insurica client, and you should be too. If your business wants to be best in class, connect with Insurica at insurica.com. That's I-N-S-U-R-I-C-A.com. And guys, summer is here, and you know what that means. It's hard seltzer season, baby. And there's only one hard seltzer that we drink on this podcast, and that is Will and Wiley Hard Seltzer from Coupe Ale Works. It's perfect for any occasion. We drink it by the pool, at the lake, and at the tailgate. It is made in Oklahoma, and it is absolutely delicious. I dare you to try the mango guava and say it's not incredible. Will and Wiley is customized for the Oklahoma lifestyle. Go find it right now in a store near you and go follow them on social media at at Will and Wiley. All right, back to the interview. Phil, uh, a conversation that a lot of OU fans have wanted to avoid over the last several years is OU's defense. But Hmm. Alex Grinch has turned things around, man. And I kind of had to do a double take because – Uh, The defensive backfield for Oklahoma has been heavily criticized for a long time now. And you've got this year's OU's defensive backs as your third best defensive back unit in the country. Did you have to double check yourself when you were doing your ranks? You're like, wait, I've got them. Where? What? Absolutely. I mean, let's face it. The last three, four years, you think of Oklahoma's defensive backs and you're thinking, a bunch of five nine, five ten guys running around back there and not matching up against the bigger receivers. Going over the team with Coach Riley this year, uh, and going over most of those positions in the secondary, they finally get they're getting the size. They're recruiting size, so, so they're bigger in the secondary than they have been. A guy like Key Lawrence coming in from Tennessee, you know, he's six foot one, two oh seven. Uh, a starting cornerback like Justin Harrington, who's six foot three, they finally can match up 
with some of those big receivers out there. But yes, absolutely. When I rated him number three, that is the first thing that popped in my head was, uh, well, really Oklahoma. And, uh, yet this is, this is a heck of a defense they got this year. In fact, uh, that's the, that's been the missing piece. You look at those first three playoff appearances, Oklahoma gave up 54, 45 and 63 points in their three playoff games. This year's defense, after allowing just 21 points per game last year and having eight starters back, loaded with talent across the board. My number three defensive line, number nine linebackers, number three DBs. I actually rate them a top five defense this year to go along with that number one rated offense. You know, whenever people ask me how good a running back is, the the first thing I usually do is look at his offensive line. And it's kind of the same thing with the secondary um, whenever you've got a good secondary, the first thing you typically look at is, okay, they must have a really good pass rush. And this OU team is going to have a fantastic pass rush. You look at those guys across the front, uh, Perry on Winfrey on the interior, Isaiah Thomas, Benito rushing off the edges. It's going to be a potent group. Yeah, and generally your pass rush comes from the the ends and the outside linebackers, and Isaiah Thomas did a great job last year with his uh, eight sacks, and Benito did a great job with his eight and a half sacks last year. But then you get the penetration from inside, and I think that really makes a defensive line disruptive. You take a good look at a guy like Jalen Redman, who uh, uh, the last time that he was out there, he had six and a half sacks back in 2019. I think that the, adding him in in the interior there is only going to help make those edge rushers even more uh, potent. So this is this is a team that's going to get after the quarterback, yet they're not just pass rushers out there. I mean, uh, you take a look at the line. They've got good size. They hold the point well, and that's key to any defense against the rush. So, Phil, a, a debate that we've had locally is what is the strength of OU's football team heading into the season because we, we're typically always talking about what Lincoln Riley and that offense are doing. But now some people are thinking that Alex Grinch, that defense may be the strength with all the experience they've got back on that side of the ball, that they may be the strength of this team heading into the year. How, how do you see it? I'm still going to go with the offense. I mean, we're, we're living in an era of oh, offensive man. football. <laughs> uh, you look at uh, Alabama last year, gave up, what, 352 yards per game. So, I mean, it's uh, it's one of those where uh, you have to win with offense, and Oklahoma's got the offense. I think the defense will not be a hindrance like it was those first three playoff things. I do believe the defense is one of the best in the country, but the overall strength of the team is going to be the offense. But, by the way, special teams also rank in my – they're number 22 in the country, so having a good special teams helps as well. Um, you know, the – the the logic in in picking Oklahoma as the number one as the as national champion favorite I I agree with and I've talked about it for a long time like the timing of this year is perfect for them like this team may not be as good as your previous two national champions in Alabama and LSU but they may not have to be with the way that everything times up the more I've thought about it I've looked at you know, these programs and there was a time when replacing a quarterback was a huge deal. You'd replace a guy, you dip way down a couple years later, whenever he got experience, you'd start playing better again, but that hasn't really been the case recently. Um, I like, I expect Clemson, Ohio state and Alabama to replace their quarterbacks and they may not have the exact same production that they had from the guys before but the way these offenses have evolved I think they're going to be close you I'm worried that I've undervalued the ability of these top teams to replace their quarterbacks have you thought about that at all oh yeah it goes into my thought process all the time and you just go back to last year for example uh, Alabama they had a first time starting quarterback in Mac Jones okay 41 touchdown passes four interceptions now they have another first-year starting quarterback. It's going to be a different type of starting quarterback and Bryce Young, more athletic, but he's got a, a powerful arm. I mean, he's everything you want in a quarterback, except for height. He could grow a little bit, would be good, but he's under six foot. But I, I think he's going to be electric, thrown to the receiving core that they have with their offensive line. He'll have a big year. And, in fact, if you look at my Heisman top ten in the back of the magazine, 
I list three first-time starting quarterbacks there. I've got Bryce Young of Alabama. I've got DJ Uyunglele of Clemson. And he did get in two starts last year and averaged 38 points per game. And, uh, I mean, he's a big boy. He's about 250 pounds, six foot four, powerful arm. He'll do great. In fact, he's got a better offensive line and receiving core than uh, Trevor Lawrence was throwing to. And even though Ryan Day is not named as starting quarterback yet, I think it's going to be C.J. Stroud. And I think C.J. Stroud throwing to the best set of receivers in the country with Garrett Wilson, Chris Olave, tight end Jeremy Rucker will have a great season. I mean, they've got guys that are second team that were number one receivers coming out of high school. They've got a great receiving core to throw to, an outstanding offensive line. C.J. Stroud will be a uh, Heisman finalist at the end of the year, despite the fact none of those three game guys – uh, are full time returning full time starters. They've got maybe two starts among them total. In fact, C.J. Stroud hasn't even thrown a pass in college football. Neither has any of the Ohio State quarterbacks. First time that's happened since 1952. Yet, yes, I think at the end of the year, a Big Ten quarterback you're looking at the first team could very well be Ohio State's uh, C.J. Stroud. Phil, it it sounds like it's going to be the usual suspects this year right and uh, I know you agree because you've got Clemson Bama Ohio State and Oklahoma on the cover what's uh w- what are a few teams that may surprise us this season yeah. I-, I know you you always look at teams that are you know gonna have the most improved year but in, in your opinion are there a couple teams that could surprise us this season and maybe be in that college football playoff picture Yeah, absolutely. And we've actually had a a really good track record with the surprise teams. And a surprise team, to make my list, has to be not in the preseason top 10 for starters, and they have to have a shot at making the playoffs. So in 2016, uh, I had Washington as my number one surprise team, and they were not in the top 10, but they actually made the playoff that year. And then in 2018, I had Notre Dame as my number one surprise team. They were not in the preseason top 10, yet made the playoff Last year, I took a five-loss Texas A&M and put them as my number one surprise team. Tell you what, Selection Sunday, I felt pretty good going in. It was Texas A&M, Ohio State. They just missed out on making the playoff last year. So two teams that won't be in anybody's preseason top ten this year, except maybe mine, uh, that have a shot of making the playoff. Number one, I'm going with the Wisconsin Badgers. And Wisconsin had an atypical year last year. They averaged 3.9 yards per carry. The reason? a rather inexperienced offensive line, and no feature running back. Jalen Berger didn't emerge to the last couple of games. Well, this year, they not only have Jalen Berger back, and he's what I call a VHD. You guys are familiar with it, but for your listeners, that's a very highly touted uh, player coming out of high school, one of the top recruits. This year, they have four VHT running backs, including Ch- uh, Ches Maluzzi, who's a transfer from Clemson, running behind a big offensive line. Graham Mertz opened up the year last year, hidden. I think it was 20 or 21 passes against Illinois in the opener. And then uh, had COVID, missed two weeks of practice, wasn't the same after that. I think he'll be one of the best quarterbacks in the country. Wisconsin always has a top-notch defense. And then you look at their schedule, as you touched on earlier, Gabe, and that would be uh, their four Big Ten road games are all against teams that had losing records last year. They very well could be favored in every game. The biggest question mark would be the game against Notre Dame in Chicago. But if they make it to the Big Ten title game, uh, they've given Ohio State quite a test in both 17 and 19 in the Big Ten title game. Wisconsin's my number two surprise team. Nobody will have them in the top ten, but they've got a shot. But my number one surprise team is really a surprise because they're not even picked to win their own division. Oregon's a favorite in the Pac-12 North. I've got Washington. And what I like about Washington, they've got a big offensive line that averages 328 pounds per man. They've got a deep set of running backs. They go about five deep at running back. They've got two veteran quarterbacks and Dylan Morris and the Colorado State transfer. And then they had a receiver. They've, they're have they loaded with Kate Ott in a tight end. Defensively, the last two years, they've only had two and six returning starters. This year, they have eight. And then what I really love is their schedule. Uh, they avoid USC and Utah out of the South. And their two toughest games of the year are Arizona State and Oregon. And they get both those games at home. So I think this year home field advantage is going to mean a lot, as I touched on earlier. I think crowds are going to be super enthusiastic. Washington already had a great home field edge. I've got them favored in all 12 games. So if you win the Pac-12 undefeated, you're going to make the playoff. And if you're looking for a real surprise, go with the Washington Huskies. They may barely scratch the top 20 this year, but I think they've got a shot at making the playoff. Got to ask you about the Big 12 and and – what you think this conference is going to look like this year. I think it's, you know, pretty deep. And then 
Obviously, Texas gets Sark from Alabama, who's going to bring a little bit different style of offense with him. He may not have the quarterback that he needs just yet, but probably going to get a little bit more production out of uh, that Texas crew, don't you think? Yeah, I think there's nine bowl caliber teams in the Big Ten this year. Sorry about that, Kansas. Uh, when you take a look at uh, uh, what Sark uh, brings in, when I talked to Coach Sarkeesian, went over the team with him, he's actually very pleased with the talent he inherited. And he pointed out to me something I was saying last year, which is Texas was basically three plays away from being undefeated. You go back and look at that TCU game, they fumbled at the goal line. The Oklahoma game went four overtimes. Change one play there, and they win that. And then the Iowa State game, they let almost start to finish. Iowa State didn't take its first lead till about two minutes left. So he came in, he very, was very confident, said that they were three plays away from being undefeated last year and felt they're going to have good success. But you can go right down the line. I talked about TCU earlier. Uh, as being one of those sleeper teams that uh, Oklahoma should worry about. Uh, and I talked about their strengths, especially on the defensive side. Oklahoma State may have lost some key players like Chuba Hubbard and uh, their wide receiver, Tylen Wallace, but they've got Spencer Sanders back and Coach Gundy very confident in the talent he's got coming back. Neil Brown stepping up to another year at West Virginia has his best team yet, and uh, they proved pretty good. And Matt Wells. Uh, I like the the overall talent they have. Adding t- Tyler Shuck from uh, Oregon is going to give them a little more mobility out of the quarterback position. They've got one of the most experienced teams in the league. Kansas State, last year, they lost their starting quarterback early in Skylar Thompson. He's back. He's an NFL caliber guy. And then Baylor, you know, last year with Baylor, first-year head coaches had it extremely rough last year. No spring practice. Didn't even know their team. Coach Aranda now knows his team, and that's going to make Baylor fairly dangerous. So I think nine bowl caliber teams in the Big 12. Now, I don't think all nine will make it because teams are going to have to beat each other up in the conference play. But I am I'm really like the depth that the Big 12 has. And once again, apologize to Kansas, but brand-new head coach taken over after the spring and wasn't a great team prior to it. Quick break. Are you looking to buy or sell a house in the OKC metro area? I just used the Ronaldo Cloud Group to sell my old house, and it was so easy and stress-free. Station Ronaldo and Maddie Cloud are with Sage Sotheby's International Realty. They believe in prompt communication, an honest relationship, and luxury service, and that's exactly what they gave me. You can reach them by emailing Stacia at Stacia at SageSir.com. That's S-T-A-C-I-A at S-A-G-E-S-I-R.com. Or you can contact them on Instagram at at sold by Stacia and at sold by Maddie underscore. You will not regret it. And make sure you send your kids to Bishop McGinnis Catholic High School. Bishop McGinnis Catholic High School has a long tradition of educational excellence. With a 12 to 1 student to teacher ratio, no student is overlooked. Bishop McGinnis's college prep curriculum offers 22 AP courses. There are numerous clubs and organizations for students to join. And as a proud member of the OSSAA, there are 14 sports offered. If you want to provide the best possible educational and spiritual development for your children, contact Bishop McGinnis Catholic High School or visit bmchs.org financial aid is available all right back to the interview yeah i don't i I don't think you owe kansas an apology at all there (laughs) phil now i that this is always one of uh, my favorite debates with you when we get to have you on where do you think the big 12 stacks up this season we we all know that the sec they got the best teams they got the most talent uh that that's kind of a given at this point but where do you see the Big 12 stacking up against the other conferences this football season? I've, I've got the Big 12 number three. Believe it or not, I picked the SEC number one. I know that shocks you. Uh, <laughs> no, number two, I went with the Big 10. Uh, and then number three, I do have the Big 12 this year. And once again, it, it goes – when I rank conference strengths, I'm not just looking at the top two or three teams. I'm looking at the entire conference. And if you got nine bowl caliber teams out of ten, you deserve to be near the top. I think that's the difference between the Big 12 and the ACC. The ACC, a little on the top-heavy side. Uh, there is some weakness at the bottom of the ACC. If you were to say, and this is the last one I've got for you, if you were to say the one thing, like if Oklahoma, you've got Oklahoma picked to win it, if they don't win it, what are we going to look be looking back and saying was the issue? Is it going to be defensively? Is it going to be running game? Is it going to be maybe Spencer Rattler had a down year? Or is it just going to be that there was another super special quarterback in the country? Uh, as far as not winning the national title or the Big 12? Uh, national title. 
Okay. Well, anything can happen in the playoffs. Uh, I would have to say uh, I, I do feel they're the most talented team. You know, I mentioned number one offense, number five defense. Uh, I don't think there's a huge gap between them and Alabama, Clemson, Ohio State. I think it's very close. And anything can happen once you get in the playoffs. So I think it might just be, you know, one of those things where a key play here and a key play there decides the game. I don't see any weaknesses on this Oklahoma team. So I can't point to one spot that says this would stop their title run because I don't really feel there is a weakness on the Oklahoma team. Phil, uh, I'm so glad we went this long without talking about OU and Texas going to the SEC. But you you have dedicated your life to college football, right? I mean, uh, there's – you know, when I, when I think Phil Steele, the first thing I think is college football. So I, I'm just curious, man, what do you think? Because this is, this is going to be a big change. It's going to be a big shift. You know, just what are your overall thoughts about those two brands leaving the big 12 and, and going to the SEC? Well, I'm I'm a traditionalist. I mean, I, I go all the way back to, you know, when Texas and Arkansas were playing in the Southwest Conference. And I was sad when the Southwest Conference got dissolved and turned into the Big 12. And when you have these changes, you know, Nebraska going to the Big 10 and not playing Oklahoma every year, how are we going to survive? Yet somehow we've survived. So uh, I'm being a traditionalist. I'm not wild about the uh, what's coming up, but we'll have to see how it all shakes out. And do we really know exactly what's going to happen in the future? No, I don't think so at this point. We'll see what the what the seismic shift happens. But this is one of the the largest seismic shifts I think we're going to see in college football. I just hope I'm still writing about 130 teams in the magazine every year because I think that's what gives us the big advantage. Is uh, we we spend as much time in the magazine on a team like Akron or UL Monroe that we do on Oklahoma and Alabama. Two full pages, every bit of information you could want on those teams. Yeah, the the magazine. Uh, I mean, there's nothing better, man. You are you're the best doing it. Now, before we let you go, let let our listeners know how can they go get this year's magazine. I appreciate that. You know, it's exclusively this year at Barnes and Noble and Books a Million. So if you go to your local Barnes and Noble, local Books a Million. Now, the problem this year being exclusive like that is they're selling out so doggone fast. It seems like once they get their shipment, get the store stocked, it sells right out. So if you go to a Barnes and Noble, Books a Million, don't see it, you can go online. You just go to philsteel.com. That's S T E E L E.com. But the three best places to get the magazine right now, 352 pages. Uh, it's like getting 130 different media guides rolled into one. You go to Barnes & Noble, Books A Million, or philsteel.com. Phil, you're the man. It's unbelievable what you do each year with the magazine. It It is greatly appreciated by everyone that covers college football and everyone that loves college football, man. Thank you. Hey, a real pleasure being on with you guys and uh, to be on with a couple of legends like yourself. That's uh, that's pretty neat. So uh, thanks for having me on your podcast today. Thanks, Phil. We I, we needed too. that, man. Appreciate yeah. you. Yeah, always always need a little uh, little pump up there. Good stuff. <laughs> Expectations are sky high for the Sooners, Ted. They could not be higher. Yeah. I, I, I like a lot of the stuff that he said. I like a lot of his picks, but how about also a couple I question, you know, first, I, I mean, the big question from everything we talked to him about. And I, w when I got the magazine and I go through the entire thing, like a psycho, I was looking at those unit rankings. I was stunned when he had OU as his number one offensive line in the country stunned. I hope he's right, man. We, we've talked about that group having talent, but there's still some question marks, right? I mean, I, we'll, we'll see if the pieces come together. Yeah. Yeah, I, I hope they come together. I think, you know, offensively, that's going to be the real key. Um, you can look at all the other – the units, the running back, wide receiver, and even – Spencer Rattler, it's all going to be predicated on how that offensive line plays. If they play like the, if they are the best offensive line in the country by the end of the year, I think he's right. And we will win a national championship, but where we sit today, 
that's a big ask, I think. No, I'm with you. I like what he said, what he had to say about the defense, though. I think that we're all expecting, and, and I like how he has the defensive backs ranked high and the defensive line ranked high. And you mentioned it, Ted. Th those two go together in my mind. And uh, the most important thing to, in, in my mind, to playing good defense is defensive line play. And that makes guys life in the back end so much easier. So uh, I, I think it makes a lot of sense that he's got those kind of working together where he has them both ranked highly, right? Third in his unit rankings in the country. And you know, that's, that's what it's going to take. It's going to take that, that type of play from OU's defense to knock off a Bama, knock off an Ohio state, a Clemson. Like that's, it's what it's going to take that that defensive line along with that defensive backfield and the well the entire football team obviously but we know that OU's offense is going to be solid it's can the defense be national championship caliber that's that's what could separate them from the rest of the teams in the country yeah what he say fifth best defense is where he has them ranked right said now said top 5 um that's big which let me just say Huge disparity between that and not even being in the top 20 per uh, pro football focus. So just saying, um, we'll see who's right. We'll see who's right. I'm going with Phil. Same. All right. And on that note, episode, I don't even know where we're at. I lost count. I <laughs> won 40. To, I don't the know. The first episode in August is in the books. I think. Is it the first episode? In August? Oh, maybe it's not. No, that, I don't think. No, right. because we're, we're, yeah, we will have had. It, it'll be the second episode second, in August. Yeah, that's right. So I don't know. It's it's what it's in the high one thirties. Uh, if you're keeping track of this, I mean, call me out. It's fine. But we'll we'll have a new podcast on Thursday morning. As always, Teddy, this this was great, and I I can't believe that we're on vacation. Like we're. I know. I'm enjoying even, it but already. Even, <laughs> but we did it, right? I mean, we still did it, and yeah. it was good. If it was Absolutely. bad, I would say it was bad, but it's always good talking to Phil. That's right, and it's, you know, it, it it's something you can hang on to. It's got the information. Gosh, I hope is the same um, whenever the interview takes place and whenever it's released, so all good. I just did it quickly. I think, okay, so 133, 134. This will be 135. All episode right. 135 i was stalling <laughs> we'll have a new podcast it'll drop thursday morning just a reminder you can hear teddy from two to six on sports talk 1400 not this week vacation you can hear me on sirius xm big 12 radio channel 375 hope you all have a great week until next time we appreciate y'all for listening and do what you always do oklahoma take care of each other